Lieutenant. This is Christina. She's a friend of Teresa's. How's Teresa? She's at Penrose Hospital being treated. Oh my god. This is horrible. Is there a boyfriend or husband that we could contact? Christina tells us that Teresa lives with her common-law husband, who she identifies as James Austin. I was just with him a few hours ago down the street at the pool hall. How are they getting along? Fine. I mean, they seem normal. Here it is. Let's see if mom is Oh, no. Really? Yeah. You, you Baby, I mean, good luck. I mean, not that I'm going to do. <laughs> any better. She said no angry words were exchanged. They were very much in love and laughing and joking. Do they have any kids? Yeah, she has three. And she's four months pregnant with her next. You know where the kids are? I believe she dropped them off at her brother's house earlier today. OK, good. Uh, how about the husband? Do you know where he is? Um, I thought they came home together. Christina tells Kenda that Teresa's husband, James, often goes by his nickname. Christina says nobody calls him James. Everybody calls him Mookie. He's in his middle 20s. All his friends are in their middle 20s. And they may know where he is. Can you give me the names of any of his friends? Yeah, there's actually a couple right over there. Christina points him out and says the one guy's name is Darius, and the other guy's name is Ota. What can you tell me about them? They've all been friends for a while, but I heard that Mookie and Oda got into a fight a few days ago. And what kind of fight? Did they argue? Oh, no, it, it definitely got physical. I heard that Mookie beat up Oda pretty bad. Thanks. You're welcome. Now, that interests me. That produces revenge as a motive. What if in the act of revenge, they wind up shooting Teresa by mistake? Or maybe they just go after his old lady because they can't find him. There's a lot of possibilities there. Gentlemen, I understand you're friends with Mookie? Mm, I don't know no Mookie. You know Mookie? No. There are the usual non-cooperative, unhelpful, it's the typical street crap that you deal with all the time. So you guys are just hanging out here in front of this house? Oh, no. Let's cut the boys. I'm in no mood. Someone just shot Mookie's wife. They looked surprised when I said that. We know him and stuff, but we hadn't seen him all day. You mind if we look in your car? Whatever. All right, step over here. When I look in this car, Got blood. I see dried blood on the visor. Now they're not going anywhere. When do you want to tell me how you got blood in the car? What? What are you talking about? Put cuffs on these guys, put them in the car. Are you serious? Oh, come on. What are you doing? Come on, man. We hook them up and put them in the back of a police car, and we get a warrant for the car. Man, we didn't shoot nobody. Yeah, we'll see about that. Until then, just sit tight, gentlemen. Seeing the blood in that car, they could be players in this. Nobody's going anywhere until I find out. Let's get a sample of that blood, see if it matches our victim. Sure. We're not going to do a DNA test in the field. Uh, that's in the movies. But we can do a blood type. Is it type O? Is it type B, type AB? They can do that. Ota denies his alleged confrontation with Mookie ever happened. But Kenda continues to press for answers. Is anyone ready to offer up an explanation how the blood got in the car? That's probably from when we were slap boxing. What's slap boxing? Oh, to explain, that's where guys get together and they start slapping each other in the face <laughs> and, oh. and uh, who can hit who the hardest and stand it better. And, I'm coming. And one of them had gotten a bloody nose, and that's how the blood got there. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Lieutenant, can I speak to you for a second? What's up? Ran a quick test on the blood in the car compared it to the victim. There's no match. Totally different times. All right, I guess we have no reason to hold these clowns anymore. Go ahead and cut them loose. Take a bow. This is the highs and lows of murder cases. You're feeling pretty good, and all of a sudden, oh, no. It collapses. You guys probably cut out the slap box and crap before it caused you more trouble. So we're back to where we started. Kenda now believes his best hope for solving the case may rest with the victim herself. He heads to Penrose Hospital, where Teresa Austin has just been wheeled out of surgery. She survives the surgery. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to live, 
but it's certainly a good sign. Excuse me, doctor? Yes. How's she doing? She's still under anesthesia, but it won't be very long now. So if you want to go to the waiting room, I'll have someone come get you when she's coherent. OK, we'll do that. While waiting for Teresa to recover, Kenda comes across another potential lead. Yes, I know. But it's bad. They're not even sure Teresa's gonna live. I'm in the patient waiting area. There's a woman on the phone. And I hear her say Teresa this and Teresa that. Well, that's obviously somebody that's connected to our victim. I love you too, honey. OK, bye. Excuse me, are you related to Teresa Austin? She said, I'm her mother. My name is Ramona. I'm Lieutenant Kenda from the Colorado Springs Police Department. I'm very sorry about what happened to your daughter. Thank you. I said, how kind of relationship does she have with Mookie? They get along fine? He and Teresa have been together over seven years. He was so happy about the pregnancy. He's very, very good with the children. He's an excellent father. Excuse me, Mrs. Sorens, Lieutenant. She's awake right now, if you would like to see her. She is in awful, awful condition. She is bandaged. She is bruised and swollen. She's on a respirator to assist her in breathing because her mouth is wired shut. She's not going to say a word. But she is conscious and reasonably alert. I know you can't speak. Can you write? If you think you can write, blink twice for yes and once for no. She blinks her eyes twice. So I go to one of my guys, give me your notebook and a pen. And we provide those to her. All right, take your time and tell me what happened. She tried to write the answers as much as she could. She was in pain. She'd gone through hours of surgery. She writes, I can remember everything. Throwing up blood shooting out, gushing. I remember pulling my brains through my mouth. Then I couldn't breathe. I just laid there shocked for a while. In her note, Teresa also details the bizarre behavior of her shooter. He was holding me so it stopped bleeding, but he just sat there rocking me. I started going hysterical. He left me for half an hour bleeding. I laid there thinking he called 911. Then I crawled in the living room and called myself. Teresa's account of the incident is gut-wrenching, but she hasn't yet answered Kenda's most pressing question. Teresa, tell me who did this to you. I looked at her and I said, do you know who shot you? And she blinks twice. Well then, darling, tell me who it is. Write his name on that piece of paper. I watch her form the first letter, and the first letter is an M. Oh, no. It can't be. She continues to work his name and spells it out, Mookie. That's who shot her. That is who is cradling her. And that's who abandoned her to die. You read that, and you want to go find Mookie and put a gun in his mouth and pull the trigger. 